Less than a week to go until September, and the tropics are clear of hurricanes. Some polar air is on the move this week, bringing mild weather east of the Rockies. In the southwest, a highly active monsoon pattern has spread through a large part of the western U.S. In the Pacific Northwest, a heat wave brings unseasonably hot conditions to Seattle and Portland. Very little going on in the tropics. Tropical Storm Fernan is far out in the Atlantic, about 500 miles northeast of Bermuda, and it will be completely out of the picture by late week. And as you can see, this is an NHC seven-day forecast. Doesn't show any imminent initiation. Even the Cape Verde storm track is shut down at the moment. This is a bit unusual because the first week of September has the highest sea surface temperatures in the North Atlantic. The second week of September, that has the peak of tropical cyclone activity in this basin. The long-range progs from the Climate Prediction Center are going for a possibility of development in that storm track. Got the wrong tool up. There we go. So eventually the Cape Verde storm track will become active and possibly some development also in the Bay of Campeche and the Western Caribbean. And of course, south of Mexico, that always tends to be active this time of year. Here's a look at the tropics from Cuba, Dominica, Puerto Rico, Florida, all the way out into the Pacific, out towards the Cape Verde Islands. So this gives you the grand view of the Atlantic. Couple of easterly waves moving through, maybe one here also. And we have the Bermuda Highway up to the north. So over the next week or so, just not very much going on. This is the detrimental effects chart. The blue is going to be the high values of shear, which are not favorable for hurricane development. The red then indicates very dry air, which is also not very conducive to cy tropical cyclone formation. So we do have a couple of areas here. The problem is there's not really any disturbances to grab hold of that available environment. So going forward into the weekend and into next week, just dominated by this large anticyclonic flow throughout much of the Atlantic, not really seeing any easterly waves at all. And that brings us to the end of the period right there maybe some hint of an easterly wave, but overall no closed circulation down in the south, so it may be a while before we see anything of interest. Closer to home, the surface analysis showing a 10, 22 millibar high across the Corn Belt, very broad, and that's got a large bubble of cold air filtering down through the Midwest, the southeast, and the northeastern U.S. Temperatures rather mild in the 60s, 64 there, just east of Pittsburgh, 70s all the way into the Ohio River Basin, and another little corridor of very cool weather, rain-cooled air, down in the 60s during the afternoon in Oklahoma, which is very unusual. This is the time of year where we could easily see it over 100. So some of that cold air also diverging down into North Texas and trying to get into the Shreveport, Monroe area, but just not very much coming very far south. Still 90 degrees along and south of Interstate 20. There's the frontal boundary. That's going to be the extreme limits of that cool air. Northeasterly flow, slightly modified air just north of that boundary. Temperatures in the 80s all the way down towards the Florida Panhandle, a wave off the eastern coast of the U.S. And here you see a lot of precipitation all through the western U.S. That's the southwest monsoon. And look at those dew points in the lower left of the plot. We've got 50s in many of these areas, even 60s up in Idaho, which is kind of unusual up there because that's a semi-desert environment. We've got upper 40s all the way up into Oregon and Washington and further south in Arizona, 66 there at Phoenix, 64 at Blythe, and 56 around Barstow Daggett. So it is uh, definitely a change, and this is what we tend to see this time of year. Late summer does bring that monsoon into much of the western U.S., Let's get a better look at that with the monsoon graphic. And this doesn't have the full extent up into the northwestern U.S. 
but this at least shows you the source areas, the Gulf of California, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Mexican Plateau, which is not really a source, but it's a uh, transfer area. So we've got those near 60s dew points all the way up in Arizona, and we see that mild south and south westerly flow through much of the southwestern U.S. So going forward into midweek, here's the changes. It does dry off a little bit there in California down into the 40s. Down in the corner, we've got Tropical Storm Juliet. Now that's not expected to move into the southwestern U.S., but the enhanced southerly flow will help encourage that moisture to come northward. Many areas of the southwest will get some enhancement and going into thursday and friday yeah we do get that moisture surge it looks like some of that does make it up from juliet see there offshore so that's not going to bring a whole lot of precipitation mostly clouds possibly storms in the higher elevations and we go into saturday and sunday still looking at 50s dew points down south rather dry up to the north and we're starting to get the effects of some of that ridging as we get some height rises across the southwestern U.S. In the northeastern U.S. a very strong cold advection pattern. This is cumuliform cloud fields and within that some areas of showers and even some weak thunderstorms here and there. Some of the stronger activity is around London and Toronto up there in Ontario all the way up to Ottawa. Temperatures in the 70s and down south in Virginia always a little bit warmer. We find low 80s into the Washington DC area. Very cool conditions in the Great Lakes area mid 60s in the Michigan UP and 70s throughout Michigan, Wisconsin and the Chicago area. In the southeastern U.S., that cold air is pushed through there as well. That's immediately identifiable by the lack of low cloud cover. This is August. We should be seeing some of this stuff, some of that cumuliform cloud, but that is gone. That's because that frontal boundary has been pushed all the way down to Florida and Louisiana and parts of central Texas. Highs were in the 70s across the Appalachians, in the 80s across the Deep South, but we do find 90s still across Florida, southern Georgia, and all the way over to Louisiana, where we have mid-90s this afternoon. In the southern plains, we find that boundary from Louisiana all the way into eastern New Mexico. Further north, we find an area of upslope flow and isentropic lift that's produced a very persistent area of stratus, low clouds, and some embedded showers as well. Especially yesterday, we had a lot of that going on, but most of that is pushed out into Arkansas. That's produced a very cold air mass, temperatures in the 60s and 70s, cold for this time of year, and as we mentioned, 90s to continue down in central and southern Texas, 100s in the lower Rio Grande Valley. In the northern plains, they are under the influence of high pressure. You can see the northerly flow right there. The flow trying to turn around to the south, out through the Rockies, but in between, that's where we find the high pressure. And of course, the surface map showed that centered somewhere in this area. Cold temperatures this morning, Kansas City dropped to 50, setting a new record for the date. Might as well mark that. Kansas City located right there. And St. Joseph, Missouri, 45, which was also a record. Mild conditions this afternoon, 70s, but we're warming back up into the 80s in the western Dakotas. 85 expected at Casper this afternoon, 86 at Billings, and 87 at Glasgow, Montana. Heading down into the southwestern U.S., the monsoon pattern is underway. The only question is, where is there not precipitation? Let's bring this up to the peak heating time. Get everything fired up here and see what's going on. That's going to be about right there. We'll just stop that. So the lowest deserts away from the mountains, those aren't always showing much of anything. Closer to the Gulf of California, where we have a little bit better moisture, we do have showers and storms going there. We've got storms on the higher terrain, the continental divide into the Painted Desert, the Mokion Rim, out into the Wasatch Range up north, and also the Sierra Nevadas. That's firing as well. All of these areas have flash flood watches. Not much going on in the San Joaquin Valley. They've just 
got the heat temperatures in the 90s but i think the highest that we're seeing today is 99 at bakersfield also some hot temperatures in the los angeles and san diego area uh, mostly inland the coastal areas not doing too bad uh, inland we've got 90s and close to 100 we do have some strong storms going there in the palmdale and barstow area let's take a look at the radar we have had quite a bit of activity there around Barstow. The Edwards radar appears to be down, so we're using the Santa Ana radar. So it's looking across the mountains north of Riverside. And what we see here, numerous showers and storms. We did have severe thunderstorm warnings earlier this afternoon. That was for 60 mile an hour winds, penny sized hail. But things look a little bit better. The showers moving off into the deserts and this very distant severe thunderstorm warning up there near China Lake. Looks like some activity also around Las Vegas. We'll pull that up there. That's going to be around Henderson, maybe Boulder, Boulder City. Well, I did find the Las Vegas radar appears to be down, but this is where you can use visible imagery to supplement that coverage. The surrounding radar is not really picking up on this. Actually, I should try Cedar City. Yeah, you can see all that activity there in southern Utah, northern Arizona, and of course, in the Las Vegas area. This is up at about 15 to 20,000. I would expect that to show up at that range. Doesn't look all that impressive. But down south, this looks like some stronger elements. That's well south of Boulder City. In the Pacific Northwest, they've been seeing quite a bit of heat. Yesterday, it was up to 101 at Wenatchee, which set a daily record. 99 at Ellensburg, which was also a record. And Seattle-Tacoma Airport reached 91, tying a record. Just imagine landing at Seattle and stepping out into that kind of heat. Well, one more hot day on tap for the Pacific Northwest. We're expecting 100 at Lewiston and at Medford, and with upper 90s in the interior. But some of that monsoon activity starting to move up into that area. A couple strong elements. That one right there looks like near Mount St. Helens. Other very strong storms around the Medford and Bend area and in the Salmon River Mountains and in southern Idaho as well. We do have flood watches continuing for southeastern Oregon, expanded across southern Idaho. They've increased the coverage on that. That includes Boise, and that continues through Wednesday night due to the potential for heavy rainfall. Heading west out into the Pacific, we've got a frontal system off of the British Columbia coast, and we have a very strong low out there in the Bering Sea. 1,000 millibars on that, and that's associated with, with an atmospheric river, strong southerly flow being ducted up into western Alaska. That's going to be a very persistent pattern going into the rest of the week. In fact, southeast Alaska is going to be the place to be. You can see they're under that high pressure, and that should be sort of in the area over the next several days. So if you're up there in Alaska, probably a good time to go to Juneau or Skagway or Haines. We have our first big winter storm of the fall season that's in the Dalton Highway area. From the Brooks Range to Dead Horse, that's for tonight, Wednesday and Thursday. One-tenth of an inch of ice possible. Winter weather advisory up there on the coast around Prudhoe Bay through Thursday morning up to two inches of snow expected there as that atmospheric river comes into contact with colder air on the north slope. There's the model data for that. This is where we're at right now. And we've got the fronts kind of lined up like this. Some very warm conditions in the Northwest Territories in Yukon, but very cold air up to the north. And over the next few days, this is how things are going to progress. You can see those lows out there across western Alaska, pretty much in the same place. One big slug of very moist air moving up into the southwestern interior across Anchorage, Wednesday and Thursday, and moving up north, producing some freezing rain and maybe some snow up there where we've got that overriding going into Thursday and Friday. So probably more warnings about to come out, but gradually everything starts shifting to the east Thursday and Friday into eastern Alaska and the Yukon. So by now the fronts are running about like this. And gradually everything pulls on off to the east into Saturday and Sunday, and that should bring some relief to the Northwest Territories, finally. 
But for now, they do have heat warnings across much of southwestern Northwest Territories. Temperatures right now in the lower 80s, and they could be as high as the mid-80s over the next few days. Some wildfire smoke problems continue across the Great Slave Lake area. Further south in British Columbia, we've got heat warnings from Terrace down towards Bella Coola, and also in the Lytton and Kamloops area down to Penticton. Temperatures 99 at the last check just an hour ago and 80s throughout the southern part of the province. Heat warnings also in effect for North Alberta into northwestern Saskatchewan, also for the Calgary Edmonton area eastward to the Saskatchewan border. Temperatures there could be into the mid 80s as well. Further east in the Maritimes, we do have smoke advisories continuing around the Digby, Nova Scotia area. No problems in Newfoundland. They're getting that very pleasant westerly flow, drying things out, but still some rain problems. Just south of Hopedale, they're expecting one to two inches as that wraparound pulls into Labrador. Taking a look at the temperatures over the next five days or so, you can see the boundary between the cooler air up to the north, especially there in Oklahoma, 60s, 65 for high at Woodward. Contrast that with mid-90s a little bit further south. Also, that hot weather up there in the northwestern U.S. Anyway, going into tomorrow, not really a whole lot of change. Continued hot in the northwest, maybe dropping several degrees off those temperatures. The heat starts moving north out there along the Caprock area of Texas. Even hotter for Thursday, approaching 100 degrees around Abilene and Wichita Falls. Also, Oklahoma City warming up but we're still holding on to a lot of mild air across the northeastern U.S. Friday and Saturday, the cold air makes another push southward into Texas. That brings the 80s further south. Meanwhile, it gets hotter out there in the southwestern deserts and still looking at 90s out there in Washington. 107 for Phoenix on Sunday, 102 at Las Vegas as well. Okay, let's take a look at the forecast and put the maps into motion. This is going to be dominated by this large cold air mass gradually oozing southeast and pushing the boundaries along with it. Now, on the tail end there in Texas, this boundary does reorient northwest and southeast. Some warm air advection gets going, and that helps support some convective complexes going into Wednesday and maybe Wednesday night. And there's one right there across the Ozarks late Wednesday and Thursday morning that propagates into Arkansas. Maybe some more development for Thursday night somewhere along that boundary. And here comes another burst of cold air southward going into the weekend. That'll push the whole enchilada southward. And up to the north, this is a new development. This is some very cold polar air coming out of Alberta and Saskatchewan. We'll have to see if that actually verifies. That could be the old GFS cold bias. But, you know, if this pans out, this could be a nice change going into the first week of September for much of the Midwest and the Central Plains. So we'll see about that. Looks a little bit more like October, to be honest. And it's certainly welcome. I mean, it hasn't really been a bad summer or anything like that, but I am looking for a change in the seasons and hopefully we'll get that soon. And that will be it for this edition of Forecast Lab. We probably will be back on Thursday once again because the Labor Day weekend is coming up and that usually means travel plans and family. And for me, that's no exception. So we'll see how all that works out. Hope you have a great uh, couple of days and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.